Welcome to Treating TMJ, a journey to a pain-free life. Now, we've gone through the uh, journey. Let's let's review where we are on the journey to this point. Uh, people identify the systems. They go to, for their initial consultation with Dr. and Solara. Then a treatment plan is designed, and then they're on the road to a cure. No longer masking the symptoms, rather treating the problem. And so in this episode, we really want to talk to people who have been on this journey and discuss where they were, what they went through, and where they are now. Our first guest is Sarah. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. And of course, Dr. and Solara is joining us. Happy to be here as well. <laughs> and uh, Sarah, what started you on your journey to reach out to Dr. and Solara and the TMJ and Sleep Center? Um, it's kind of a funny story and maybe a little bit inappropriate. <laughs> um, <Well edited. laughs> my jaw had kind of popped a little my whole life, but I thought that was normal. And when I was a sophomore, going into my sophomore year of college, I was with my old partner at the time and something we were hanging out. It was 11 p.m. on a Saturday night and I vomited for some reason Ooh. or another. And that hyper extension of my jaw locked it open and I was there. I was trying to call to him, but I couldn't call. And so I ran wow. and I knocked on his door and I <clears throat> pointed and tried to get him to come to the bathroom and show him what happened. And we looked up symptoms online. I had him try to pop my jaw back into place. And he called his dad who was, uh, worked as a nurse in the military. And he said, take her to the ER. And I was crying and I didn't want to go to the ER. Um, ultimately, we went there and I was put on anesthesia. They popped it back into place. Immediately, my jaw locked again because I opened my mouth too wide. And, uh, and they put it back together and I called my doctor back home. The funny thing is... Obviously, it happened from me vomiting, but I think the doctors had a bet because they kept asking if we were engaging in sexual activity, oh, oh, no. and that's why my jaw <laughs> locked open. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. 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 but uh, that was not the case, but they wouldn't stop pestering me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so from then, I called my doctor back home, my regular dentist, who had just given me something to sleep with that night because I said I was grinding my teeth, and I'd never grinded my teeth it's before. It's called a splint. A yeah. splint, yeah. yeah. And... They recommended me to Dr. Inslero, which fortunately he's in Middleton, which is right outside of where I was going to school. And yeah, literally around the corner from UW. Yeah. Now, yeah. Dr. Inslero, yeah. that, that, that is a different journey than me. I was like, I got a little bit of pain. My <laughs> neck hurts. That's an extreme case, but probably something we see. not that unusual for you. Yeah, we, we see those cases. And uh, then, then sometimes you have to distract the jaw, which I've done that too. Uh, I'd rather not. Those are not not fun cases to do, obviously. But uh, the whole point is not to let it happen again. And the whole point that and what, what happened with you is the muscles had had enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they just said, sorry, we're, we're not moving. It's kind of like if you dislocated your shoulder, it would be so painful because the muscles seize up because it, they don't want you to move the shoulder and create more problems with the joint. So it, it's kind of like a reflex of the muscles. Can I please say I've I've been asked by a friend to pop a shoulder back in and that scared the heck out of me. Like <laughs> your partner at the time was pretty brave to try to put your jaw back in. I'd have been like, I'm out. No, we're going to the that doctor. Is, yeah, that is, I'm surprised. Yeah, th that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. That means it means you have a problem. Um, so um, that's the whole idea. So then when she first came here, the nice part was, OK, I had down a list of sy symptoms, jaw locking and jaw clicking, of course. And neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, all of the above. Because I'm sure you didn't think that your jaw was creating neck pain, back pain, or shoulder pain. No, I had no idea they were connected. But after the consultation, it it makes sense. You know, it just makes sense how it affects everything. And I told my dad, and my dad is very skeptical of doctors. And he was like, I don't believe this. I met your this dad, man. if I remember. <laughs> yes, yeah, my, yeah. yeah, so Dr. Inslayer and my dad have met. And my dad adores him, actually, really? oh, that's nice. uh, which is awesome. And I've tried to convince my dad of the treatment himself. But I don't think he would commit to it as fully as you need to. He's, he's got to have a why. Yeah. You know, a powerful why. And, and the other thing you had listed was, and, and people always list this, is migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. And I know they're okay. not migraine headaches. They're muscle contraction headaches because of the problems with all the muscle dysfunction. So you had listed that too. And the other thing is your jaw opening. Now, I might have encouraged you not to open too wide when you first came in. Yeah, I'm correct. But you were about in the low 40s. And now when you left... What were you? Do you remember? I'm an anaconda. Yeah. That's what he calls me. <laughs> She's 60 millimeters. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and no jaw locking, no pain, no anything. Uh, the reason I say anaconda is because, obviously, that snake can 
open wide to swallow whatever it is it's preyed upon. But right. so any patient that gets beyond 55 into the 60 range, uh, I just kind of jokingly refer like that. But yeah. Mm-hmm. That's she, a significant change, though. Huge. I wouldn't have imagined. And actually, the first time I went, I don't know if this is charted, I was so scared to open my jaw that I don't think sure. I opened it more than 22 millimeters, okay. which is insane. And that changes what you eat, how you eat, mm-hmm. whether you enjoy <laughs> eating. And, and even oh, yeah. if you can put a spoon in your mouth because, or a fork, because yeah. that'll open your mouth even further. But I, but now you're, when you came, you, what were you, 21 maybe? I was 20. Oh, 20. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause we've had a, uh, we've had 13 year olds, that, uh, 13 year old that opens 19, 19 wow. millimeters. So, you know, so we've seen that stuff. I've had people open 10 millimeters, five millimeters. You know, and they are in this, you know, they are just in a whole world of hurt, you know, because they can barely, well, how can they swallow? It's really hard to swallow Mm -hmm. as well. And you hit on a really important thing when you were kind of picking on your dad. <laughs> it, it, it is a commitment because we talked about the, the the symptoms and then getting to Dr. in Solara's office, going through the analysis and, and having him get a treatment plan for you. But then that next phase in the journey truly is the treatment plan mm-hmm. and doing doing the steps you need to repair the problem. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first thing he tells you once you get your first orthotic um, is you have to do your exercises, you know, get your body moving, um, do yoga. It actually changed my life because I started doing yoga religiously after the treatment. And now I'm an instructor and it's amazing. Are you really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's, were you an instructor when you left? Um, when you left I, us in October? I wasn't certified, um, but oh. I was doing it. Well, I always wow. knew, um, but I always knew you'd be certified. So. Yeah. <laughs> in a uh, way. <laughs> no, just kidding. The yoga okay. aspect is fun, too, because it's like I never would have thought to do yoga. And I'm yeah, still horrible Randy's at it. I still don't know if I want to do it in front of people, but I have the – I even made sure I had a wearable that measured my time doing yoga <laughs> and things like that so, I could, it's, it's so the, I could track this stuff. But it's the effort. You know, I used to run marathons, and you'd see people that are lining up for a marathon going, this person's going to run a marathon. But, but you know, they, they put in the time, they put in the effort. They got their feet out of bed to, to practice to be able to run one. Mm-hmm. So you can't, you know, if you don't worry about that at all, it's your effort. We applaud. Yeah. You know? And a lot of the stuff, like the roller on, the, on my the back roller, and neck, yep, and the, yep, yep. that, I was in a lot of pain when I started doing that mm-hmm. stuff. And now it doesn't bother me at all. So even that progress. Has has been helpful in my in my treatment journey. Yeah, Absolutely. which is cool. I didn't go full. She she went to the extreme. She became a yoga instructor. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> well, I always knew when Sarah was in the chair because she was always in a contorted position. I was like, oh, that's Sarah in there. You called me the pretzel. The pretzel. <laughs> oh no, right? <laughs> because she's very flexible, and uh, so that was kind of cool. So uh, I I don't have this in the chart, and I was thinking about it. I know you ride horses. Mm-hmm. Were you, did you ever have any falls that you can remember from horses? I have had falls. I don't know if they would have been um, very specific to my upper body or my spine area. Uh, I had a fall where the horse stepped on its rein. I dropped the rein and it tilted and its whole barrel rolled over me. So I actually have no feeling in my lower leg, but that doesn't really contribute. Is that right? (laughs) Yeah. Um, But my whole life riding, I would feel lots and lots of pain in my shoulders. And I just thought it's because I'm dealing with a 1,500-pound animal all the time. So I'm fighting them and I'm losing, right? Good point, yeah. Um, But after my treatment, that has never happened to me again. That is so cool. Yeah. See, that's cool. It's changed everything for me. And I'm actually the president of the UW-Madison equestrian team. Uh, So we compete all over the nation, right? Wow. Um, Maybe I'll have your autograph. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we might go to nationals this year. Wow. Um, So, yeah, I thought all these pains were me riding incorrectly, and I knew what I was doing, and it was actually causing a real standstill in the sport. Sports psychology was like, just visualize and get through it. I physically could not do what I needed to do because I was totally misaligned. My right side was always a little lower than my left, which I learned. And I'm still working through and building the muscle, but at least I am capable now and not in pain. And more, and, and believe it or not, I mean, even though you were flexible, that makes you more flexible, particularly in the areas for the upper back, which is what you were mm-hmm. talking about. Exactly. Yeah, that really helps. And, you know, uh, going back to one of the things I hit on a lot is treating the problem not the symptoms you know the the sports medicine people were giving you what they thought was good advice but it was the symptom Mm -hmm. not the problem the dentist was giving you treatment for the symptom not the problem and now the problem has been addressed is that a fair thing to say oh absolutely and i hear people well done (laughs) 
I hear people say symptoms of TMJ, like, and there's so many. There's a plethora of them, and everyone has. I think most people have TMJ to some varying degree. Mine was extreme because my jaw locked open. Some it's that they snore, right? Um, but I me. always, <laughs> I always tell people, I, I, if they are ever feeling bad, I say you have TMJ, and they don't believe me. <laughs> but I tell them every time. You know how you can make them understand? Hmm. Tell them, I tell you what, uh, if they have a coat on, have them take it off, or have her, or whatever, and have them face the wall, put their hands at their side, get their cell phone, and take a picture of their back. And you will see one shoulder higher. Mm. And you'll see that's the discrepancy. And that very same discrepancy is in the mouth. Because the left and right sides are never the same height than the back teeth. There, there's always sense. a discrepancy. And the jaw is always a little higher on one side than the other, of course. And so that asymmetry travels through the body. I'm trying to remember which side of my jaw was the lower <laughs> well, one. I think it was I the right. This I don't have. But <laughs> I, have it I would just do the same thing you are. Every time he talks, I'm like, okay, where's my shoulders? Yeah. Where's my neck? <laughs> Am I doing the right stuff? There's a, just just be natural. That's mm-hmm. it. And, and belly breathe. The other thing, of course, we, we emphasize is diaphragmatic breathing because and through your nose. Because uh, that flexes your spine with your diaphragm. Mm. So when you flex your spine with the diaphragm, that's really cool. Because that can bring you here. And if you're here you won't breathe chest breathe, you'll belly breathe. And the belly breathe, it, you'll get 30% more oxygen if you're wow. belly breathing than chest breathing. So, so from cool. from your friend trying to pop your jaw back into place is, is say that's where you were, how would you describe where you are now? Healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm totally comfortable. Everything, I've just, I've, I've never felt better. I remember Dr. Insulera telling me that uh, TMJ starts developing at age six. So you grow up with it and you think that's the way your body functions. Absolutely right. And yep. my body's never felt better. I just yep. feel complete. I feel whole. I feel aligned. I feel happy. And you got a great smile. Yeah, and I have a great smile. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> exactly. to him. I know there were so many things I had no idea was wrong with me. He told me, um, or my head was too far forward. And I, right. what is your head supposed to weigh? 12 pounds or something? 12 pounds on, over your spine. Over your spine. Mine weighed 30 in front of my in spine. Front, because that's how far forward she was. Yeah, yeah that is so and, scary. And off to one side. Not just, you know, forward like that, but there's always a side angle to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just know where I'm supposed to be. One of the things about the forward head thing that I've noticed is I can actually see my shoulders in my peripheral vision now. I don't oh. know if that happened to you. I was like, I'm like, is some? Why oh, am I seeing my your shoulders? Head got out of the right, way. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's pretty out cool. Of the way. That's Good. interesting. That's really nice. I just noticed. That. I'm like, my shoulders are right there. Is something going on? Am I doing something wrong? And I'm like, oh no, I think I'm right, doing I something think you're right. Healthy. <laughs> They're not down here. <laughs> yeah, that's you that's know? awesome. So it's good. He's, he's uh, that's the whole idea. If if you and you guys. Our, uh, you know, great patient Sarah's. A, Sarah graduated, so we had graduation pictures. I'm taken. like a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. so Partially we, through. We, we took our graduation pictures, and I put you. You know, we did a little thing on that. Um, if you uh, save the tests, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're passing the test already, so that's cool. But we got to get you back to the PT a little bit, just right. for a, a refresher. But um, yeah, it, this is the kind of stuff that we routinely. Sarah is. Well, Sarah's a little more energetic and stuff and buoyant, but uh, patients, you know, there's, there's a lot of times patients say, you changed my life, you know, and which is kind of interesting. And I even told my office that. I said, you know, I hope we don't get complacent about hearing that because mm. we do hear it. And, um, and but we, we don't, you know, dwell on it, you know, next, next, next person up, you know. But, um, but when you think about the impact that you have, it, it's really... And, you know, it's really nice. Let's yeah. put it that way. I'm, my best friend returns to campus this Sunday from winter break, and we're scheduling a consultation, and I'm driving her over to you. So, Are you really? Yeah, I'm really excited to bring her. She's trying to go to an oral surgeon right now, and I told her that is oh my no. God. Yeah, <laughs> an absolute no. Yeah, let's get her an, at least an alternative view, and she can make her own mind up. That, that's yeah. the way I always look at it. So that, well, that's very nice of you. Thank you. Hey, I, I recommend everyone. My uh, professor, I'm very close with one of my professors. I'm actually a theater student and uh, kind of a that's sound what, design see, student. That's what I remember, the theater, theater part. Yeah, and so there's at a university of 40,000 people, I am one of four stage managers, and she is my stage management professor, and she has vertigo. And so I was talking with one of my friends who has a speech <laughs> impediment and went to years and years of therapy to fix the way she speaks, and I said, I think you just have TMJ. And we were on a break when we were in rehearsal, and... And then I walked in and I walked past my professor and I said, she has TMJ too. And, <laughs> and she's like, Sarah, 
what? And so she called me into her office a few days later. She's like, I'd like you to tell me more about this and what what's going on. And I told her about it. And she thinks that not only she has it, but her partner does. And so he's actually started to, going to treatments as well. And he had huge body issues from injuries and falling. And so I don't sure. know if his is more genetic or um, caused. Well, it's only genetic, but there, there, there can be trauma overlays. That's trauma. why I asked you about falling from horses, uh, because the overlay, if you fall like backward and on, and on your butt, so to speak, that's a whiplash. Mm. OK, and the whiplashes, even though, you, you know, you might have been young at the time, still are part of those overlays and they can create adhesions and create all kinds of problems that manifest later. But you, you would never think that because it's months to years later. Sure. So, but that's why the that's why the PT and what you've been doing, what you guys have been doing, is so valuable because the more you work it, the more consistent you get. The more you work through the adhesions, the more you stretch those muscles, the more you get more muscle strength, and there you are. So she's what you want to be, Randy. See, when I grow up, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So and and it's and that's why the orthotic works because I. Not to beat this up because we've done this before. Having that orthotic in your mouth is 5,000 times a day of function. Mm -hmm. And it's into your neck, shoulders, back, and ribs. And that, there's, there's nobody that can do that. That still remains one of the most eye-opening moments. I just don't think you think about how much no, the that, jaw that's area the, that's of, the your, disconnect. of your body gets used. That's the disconnect. But yet, you know, if you, th if you look at that, um, the quote, form follows function, um, then you realize that if you were, if we all became a fossil, what would be, what would be left? Well, your mandible would be left, and that's the densest bone in your body. Your teeth would be left because they're the densest structures in your body. Of course, the masseter muscle will make it, but the masseter muscle, which attaches to your jaw, is the densest muscle. Well, why would you have all these dense structures in your face? It's because you got to use things 5,000 times a day to live your life through your face. So it's better doing it with no pain. Absolutely. Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for coming in and sharing. Your story is incredible, and I really appreciate it. it really is. Thank you for having me. I will share this with everyone and anyone you as can far as I anytime. can. You can come by Oh, I well, miss everyone. <laughs> you should come by and say hello. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. Like, you walk in, and the, from the, the minute you walk into the front desk all the way through whichever, whether you're getting an x-ray, whether you're getting a new mold of your teeth or whatever, everybody's great. Yeah. It's nice. We talked about that. I talked about that with Chris, Krista as well. And uh, one of the things we were talking about was the staff. Uh, our staff is our staff. It, it's there. It's always been there. And Mary is, has been there 18, yes. 19 years. And, uh, you know, uh, and Liz, Liz has a great story, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's been here uh, at least six or more, first as a patient, then as a, a dental assistant. And uh, and Riley's new and Vicky is uh, a year or two or whatever. But these are pay, pay, we're not changing anything. They all work fine, and they're all sympathetic and caring to our patient base, and that's really the whole point. And they keep you in check. You had to say that. <laughs> Did you notice that? I noticed that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have our moments. That's for sure. Yeah, but they're really nice people. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Boom. That was awesome. That was so wow, awesome. Eh? The TMJ and Sleep Center podcast with Dr. Insulara. I'm Randy Hawk. And joining us now is Krista. <laughs> now, Krista, you and I have kind of done this journey together because we work together at the radio stations and uh, we're introduced to Dr. Insulara at the same time. Thanks for joining us to talk to us about your journey with Dr. Insulara and all the amazing people over at his office. Well, thank you for having me. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a common thread. I know. Now he's picking the guests, and they all come in and say they love him. So I, I don't know if that's on his questionnaire right. for like if I if asked, will you say you love me? I don't know. It's, it's just if you make somebody feel better, I think they have some. You know, yeah, I think that kind of happens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Krista, one of the things we've emphasized, and the podcast goes in the order of you know. Getting to meet, uh, getting, identifying the symptoms, and then getting to um, in for your consultation, then the treatment plan, and then going through the process. What what was your initial reason of oh I want to talk to him? Oh man, I've been struggling with um, lockjaw for a long time, oh, and okay. I grind the heck out of my teeth. So um, it's been something I've been doing since I was younger than I realized that I was doing. So that's to me, I'm like I got to get this figured out. So, and oh, that's interesting because I ne to this point I wasn't sure why you went, and yeah. so her and I actually went for completely different things because mine was more neck, neck, and upper jaw and snoring. So, 
And uh, so that's interesting that we, we actually went for completely different things. I'm just finding that out. And Dr. Inslar, it's not unusual. Lockjaws come up with previous guests. Oh, no, because what's happening is their jaw, their jaw placement is in the – they're in the wrong place to begin with. So when they begin the journey of trying to open, and it's been – you know, you're not five years old anymore. Um, all, that, all those bones have changed. They've remodeled, and, and sometimes it's hard to open, and you might catch – on, on these remodeling because there's little little bumps and irregularities in the in the capsule and the capsule is what houses the joint and in and the condyle is what moves it and so they might all be changed it's not unusual to see a condyle bent I mean and that's part of what we see because of the irregularity of their bite and so at what you're getting and, and you might get the locked jaw when you yawn because you hyper and then you open out of the joint and oh my god it's it could lock and in and in Randy's case it's really the same thing except that it, the the muscles that attach to the jaw are into the neck as well and into the back as well and the forward head posture as well and that'll create the neck pain which I had the same thing as Randy right. luckily that. for Krista she doesn't yawn because she's a very conscientious boss that always makes sure she gets plenty of sleep <laughs> there you go <laughs> I love it I love it plus I do not want to go back to like to the nightmares of going out when I was single and out on a date and literally I would have a lockjaw issue oh wow so like when I go to eat a steak in front of a guy I'm like oh wow not yeah. attractive one of yeah. our other guests, yep. she Sarah. said that her jaw locked up and wouldn't move, and she knew it came out, and she was on a date, and the guy tried to put <laughs> it back in, and I'm like, what? Like, yeah. Don't do that. Like, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. And then she went to the ER for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's the same thing, so it's not uncommon to see it. It's it's kind of scary, though. It's scary yeah. to anybody yeah. if you can't open, you know, open and close your mouth. I couldn't imagine that. that... It's terrible. And so yours would physically lock up? Yes, it would literally like lock open and it, it and it's happened and again it's just very scary and then not to mention the amount of times when I would wake up with headaches and realizing that I probably clenched my mouth through my entire night. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. Okay, like so like you're yep. biting down yeah. really hard for the whole night. Yep. And then even doing that for a second you're kind of like hurts. Yeah. <laughs> but see people say they they just clench at night but they clench all day. Um, and so she's clenching all day as well, and and she she's not only not making her back teeth feel good, but she's uh, making the jaw not feel good, and all these muscles get really tight. And so therefore, all you need to go is either a yawn or open your mouth real wide for an apple or something, and all of a sudden, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that because now the muscles going, are you kidding? We're not going to let you go any further. Well, that's and, an interesting thing. Yeah. You know, we talked a little bit about uh, the compensation that goes on when you have these types of things. Yeah, eating an apple is probably something you're like, no, I'm not doing that unless mm -hmm. I cut it up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, the people say that they have a lot of pain when they chew. The beauty of what we do is when the orthotic is in your mouth. Like you guys both have orthotics, so you understand. So when the orthotics in your mouth. That's your bodyguard. Your jaw can't go to the bad place anymore. I don't care if you eat nails. You, I don't care what you're eating because you're still in the proper position with the right range of motion. And so therefore, I tell people, don't worry about what you're eating. You can't hurt yourself. It's impossible. The orthotic won't let that happen. So that's kind of the, a nice start for when you get your orthotic. So Christy, you did your first consultation and you're, you, you're starting to hear a person talk to you maybe for the first time about here's why mm -hmm. and starting to talk about treating the problem instead of masking the symptoms. Tell us about that moment. Well, it was great when I first walked in. I'm like, he looks at me, he goes, oh yeah, I can tell what's wrong with you. <laughs> and it was interesting though to have that consultation with you because it was all, you know, it was from the way I was standing. You could tell from my neck, um, Dr. Anchalera knew instantly that I was definitely suffering from this. So to have that initial consultation then to go through the process of having that um, orthotic created and then to start wearing it, you do, you start to feel the difference of, wow, this is how my jaw should be sitting. Right. Right. Yeah. right, 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 and, and and function. Well, the whole part is the function part. So if you take it out after you've been used to eating with it, taking it out and go, oh, I can't do that. And I and I can remember with I can even use myself as a patient because one of my symptoms was a, I, my jaw, my not my jaw, my throat felt very tight, and I had trouble swallowing pills, and I was like, holy cow, what's going on here? And um, it, and it was you know it was the TMJ stuff that was going on. So right. everybody's got different symptoms. So it's not just one, oh, your jaw clicks or I have pain in my jaw. It, you don't have to have either to have TMJ. 
okay? Because it affects you in various places, various parts of your anatomy. <clears throat> and so the you, you started your treatment and uh, have gone through your treatment and, and your physical therapy components and things like that. And you, you're starting to feel things headed the right direction then. Oh, yes, yes. I remember when I uh, we uh, we met and we did a measurement of my mouth to see how much my mouth has actually been able to open. Like, that was awesome. That was an awesome feeling uh, to realize I could open my mouth a lot more than I'm normally used to. And quicker. And quicker, yeah. Without thinking, oh, it's, something's going to happen, which right. is nice. I, I think that that kind of stuff, the, the, the way the measurements are taken and you're doing your pain analysis every time you come in, that consistency of the treatment plan, I think, keeps you motivated because you physically see yes. the numbers. Not you know, Sure, you can say, oh, wow, I don't have that pain anymore. But then you kind of forget because you don't have it anymore. But when you start to see, oh, wow, my jaw's opening up further. I'm, I'm not locking up and things like that. I think that helps keep you motivated to keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the rewards. That's the rewards. Your Definitely. body's feeling good. You feel good. Your mood changes. It's all kinds of neat things to see. Actually, sometimes people dress a little differently. Well, you're you're different, but okay, <laughs> no, but there, there, I'm not. We're gonna, gonna see him look at me. We're gonna ex no, no, no. We're gonna exclude Krista because it's a little different. You're but right. I, but I always see the clothing change in people. They go from a more somber clothing to a little more lighter, and their eyes are a little more. Well, her eyes are always lively, but lively eyes, you know, rather than really kind of half closed eyes because they're they're in pain. Well, some you know? of the people we've had have had the extreme cases where yeah. where they had to be in so much pain. It had to just affect every moment of their demeanor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what age you are because it can be that way, you know. And and yeah, young, high school, college age were the people and we talked to. Even in my family, my 10-year-old granddaughter was like that until we uh i finally saw her from new york and uh we uh, changed everything so her she's great now but well and i just feel happier i mean and i and i say this all the time i'm like you're giving me a, a happier mouth because this mouth feeds my family so if i'm not able to open it you know what i mean uh so it is it's, yes, it's been you're great you're doing very well yeah and <laughs> I, I need her to be able to talk she <laughs> we don't need jams to sound like nothing. No, our, our staff uh, loves when she comes in. She, it's uh, it's it's very very nice. So. Well, and Krista, can you could probably speak well to that too. Going there mm -hmm. is pretty awesome, right? Yeah. You walk mm -hmm. in and everybody already knows your name, and you know it's a little like Cheers. She's pretty that much is. got the run of the place when she comes in. You're adorable. <laughs> no, he's like surrounded by these fabulous women who really hold you up. And like they're they're really cute. And you guys have great rapport with each they other. They keep me and, in line, I yeah. guess. That's what they say. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. And I love that about you. I mean, well, thank you. Yeah. I didn't do it. Do it. They're doing it. I'm just kind of there. You know, sometimes they're like, who's the boss here? I guess I don't even know. So it doesn't matter. But it is a culture that keeps you motivated to come back. You're oh, not like, yeah. oh, no. Right. You know? I I don't I would not like to be in a, a place where it's oppressive. We don't want to we don't want to create that kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I, that's that would not be something I'd want to do. I wouldn't want to work like that. So. My favorite treatment though was the one where you're in the dark room in the recliner and you get to sleep for an hour. <laughs> yes, yes. You kind of feel like Frankenstein. You got the salt lamp. You are ready to go. Yeah. I like those salt lamps. I really do. I have them at home. They're really cool. Yeah. You know, and you shut the light and you've got that kind of amber glow and it's it's a nice it's it's a nice feeling. Uh, because when we want to take the bite, we want you relaxed. We don't want, you know, muscle that's all tensed up. And people love their... Actually, I have patients that were done, and they asked to come in. <laughs> Sometimes, could I come in and go into your room and tense for a while? Yeah, they can do that. If we're not busy, we can bring them in, you know. Yeah, and it's fine. But, but that's the relationship we develop with them, you know. So, Krista, where are you in your uh, treatment plan? Oh, my gosh. I'm on to my second journey now which I'm very excited. I actually see Dr. Ancelar very soon. And so we go on to the next process where I'm going to get some brackets on my teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She's, she's getting, getting on now. She's, she's getting there. This is the last deal. So before the, the infamous graduation picture, right? Yes. Thank you. Yep. He says I've been doing my homework. So that's good. <laughs> but, but, yeah. I, I love taking those pictures and uh, it's all, it's yeah. It's my special picture right by the operatory that we have. I, I like that picture. So we became, we're consistent. 
Everybody well, graduates in front of that picture. I mean, uh -huh. I, I give them the option. If you don't feel like getting your picture taken, it's okay. We don't use, just use your first names. But in your case, that's a little different, of course. Well, I would love to take a picture with you, and I've also been rehearsing some Simon and Garfunkel for you because oh. I know that's your favorite. Yeah, that's, there is a that's Graceland the picture. picture in the office. Now that you say that, I remember seeing picture. that, a big poster. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the one the graduation gets taken in front of. And yeah. you know where I got that picture? From an album. Inside the album. It's inside it's the album. Inside I have the, the same album. poster. Yeah. See, because that. when I see that, I'm like, oh, that's the poster from inside the album. Are we dating ourselves? Yes, yes, we're dating ourselves. <laughs> What's an album, somebody might say, yeah. you know? I was little when that record came out. Can I please put that on the record? Yeah. Done. Since you know I'm what old. I love about that record? I have my dad's Graceland record. And See, when my, he said dad's Graceland record. And, yeah. Well, his name's Al. My dad's name. Oh. When, well, my dad passed away, but his name's Al. Okay. So I love that song, Call Me Al. Sure. Yeah. He so did, a, he did a video with Chevy Chase with that song. Yeah. 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 That was kind of cool. Because Paul Simon is very short, and Chevy Chase, I think, is about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, so when so. I go into your office, I have a moment every time where I take a second and think about my dad. Yeah. Which is cool. Of course, it's going to make me cry now on your podcast, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. Yeah, I have those moments with my uh, thinking of my dad sometimes. It's good though to have a good thought. Uh, you know, yeah. there's um, uh, there's a song that I love. It's called "Penny on the Floor," and the song is about uh, if it, uh, a person lost their mom, and when there's a penny on the floor, they remember to have a good thought about their mom. Oh wow! And they leave yeah, the, the penny there. Oh, make me cry <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of cool to have those kind of moments where you're like you just take take yeah. take a second have a good thought it's a good absolutely. mental health thing absolutely so. well everybody in the office seems to for the most part i think people are you know pretty happy and they're pretty well i mean we we flow pretty nicely in the office absolutely yeah and you know we kind of hit on uh, on all of that stuff it's like it's the just like it's the you're having the symptoms, you get the consultation, you do the treatment, you graduate. But I also think the treatment, the physical therapy, and the culture of healing in your office is all part of the, the three components. You know, oh, uh, you, you have to have them all. And the patient, of course, one more time, has to be consistent because it's a journey and it's, it's, and it's certainly not a sprint. Your body doesn't work, work well with sprint because that's not stable. But your body gets there and uh, you just have to stick with it. So we're there. We're there to help out. That's the whole point. We're there, to, and sometimes you, you know, give you a little shove if you need it. That kind of stuff too. Yep. Because you know that can happen, and we don't have to do that with her. <laughs> She's smiling right now. <laughs> well, come on now. I'm surrounded by a fabulous man. What are you gonna do? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Krista, thank you. Thank you for having me, Randy. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor Insular. I'll see you this month, I guess. Right. Yeah. I'll see you yeah. real soon. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh oh. Welcome back to the TMJ and Sleep Center podcast with Dr. Insulara. I'm Randy Hawk, and we're talking with another patient of the TMJ and Sleep Center, Karen. Karen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And uh, what got you to the TMJ and Sleep Center working with Dr. Insulara? Um, well, it was a bit of a journey. Um, it started when I was younger, and I was just at a regular dentist appointment. And um, I think it was maybe 10 at the time, and they were starting to notice I was developing a crossbite at a younger age. And uh, they they recommended that I go see um, an orthodontist. And at the time, they said, you know, um, to my mother at the time, um, you're, she's going to need surgery, a jaw surgery. And so my mom immediately said, you know, we don't want to do that. That sounds pretty invasive. My my daughter seems ha healthy, healthy and happy. Um, and um, it didn't seem like it was necessary. So um, fast forward several years later as an adult, I was um, kind of unhappy with my crossbite and thought, you know, maybe I should uh, explore some options and see if maybe technology has advanced since then. And <laughs> um, so at the time I was living in Seattle and I saw an orthodontist there and they said the exact same thing, that really the only way to correct this is with jaw surgery. Um, and that kind of scared me off. Also, even just to meet, sit down and meet with a surgeon, it was like $300 out of pocket just to talk to them about um, their point. treatment plan. So... Um, so that kind of scared me off and I'm like, ah, forget it. I ended up coming back to Madison and, uh, moved back home. This is where I'm from originally. Um, and, uh, I remembered that I had seen some, um, uh, massage therapists over the years because I was starting to develop this kind of chronic neck and back pain, which I attributed to me being hunched over my books, um, when I studied, um, maybe poor posture various other things. And I remember this one massage therapist mentioning 
TMJ. And so I thought, maybe I could have TMJ. I don't know anything about it. Um, so I actually just Googled TMJ Madison, Wisconsin, <laughs> since I was back in the area. And I thought, um, and then I found Dr. Insulera's website. And I thought, well, it wouldn't hurt to go in for a consult and see what he thinks. Um, so then um, this was in November of 2019. Mm -hmm. I sat down with him and uh, had a free consultation. And he said, I, I can fix your crossbite um, without surgery. And I don't know if you remember this, but I cried <laughs> during that first meet. Um, we always have tissues in the room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Um, and that was the first moment when I realized this chronic neck and shoulder and back pain I had mentioned was related to my crossbite. And all, all of it was related to TMJ. And it was the first time I had connected the dots. And I was like... Sign me up. <laughs> Isn't that watershed moment amazing? Because I, prior to that, I, prior to talking with Dr. Insulara, I never really thought about just how much is going on in that part of your body and the, the trauma and things that it can lead to. Dr. Insulara, talk to us more about a crossbite. Well, with a crossbite, well, there's several factors here with Karen, but the, a crossbite means that the maxilla is more narrow than the mandible, and the mandible is wider at a certain part of the jaw. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, but when you have that, it's kind of like a ditching effect. It makes that, that particular area of the jaw uh, more susceptible to bringing the jaw bone further back. Okay. So with a crossbite, the jaw bone will travel further back and further up, and, and that further... Okay, with TMJ anyway, you have asymmetries of jaw and posture, but that that makes it even worse. Just the notion of further back and up and sounds that, painful. But, you but think that's about, what TMJ yeah. is. But the, but the asymmetry of it is even worse with a crossbite because there's no support. And a lot of times soft tissues, and I don't know if this was the case with Karen, but Karen very well might have had a tonsil or maybe some tonsillitis or something as a kid. And when you swallow... Um, if you swallow symmetrically, you're going to hit those tonsils. So if they hurt, if one tonsil hurts rather than all tonsils, that tongue will shy away from that tonsil and not provide the force necessary to make that maxilla widen properly. So it'll it'll ditch in and the mandible will keep growing and it'll be narrower. I, I saw that with a, a child, a uh, tremendous huge tonsil, and that left area of the maxilla was just not wide enough because the tongue didn't swallow there. It couldn't. The tonsil was in the way, so it so it ditched in. But yeah, so it's. But but she's. But what the connection of dots with with Karen and we do this with everybody is, uh, and I see this in if you know we've been saying this in five year olds, uh, it's a genetic deal and um, it creates that forward head, but creates that forward head with an asymmetry, and that's why one shoulder's ahead of the other, and you know I don't want to get too long long lived with it, but that we see this in everybody, there's no exceptions. So you heard the magic phrase, we can fix this without surgery. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. couldn't believe it. Oh, I should have said that. We, we don't But I was hoping that. such a solution existed, which is why I didn't really want to pursue surgery. I mean, there are so many risks and potential complications. And That's a good point. Um, yeah. So I thought, you know, I seem to be fine enough to continue living my life this way. But now looking back, I'm like, I wouldn't change a thing. She, she, she really, her, she, everything came out beautifully. I mean, her, she had a great smile. Everything's really nice. So. You're biased. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I happen to know you, too. It helps. But uh, uh, no, the, the, thank the, you. It's, it's, when you smile, what we want is teeth to teeth, teeth to teeth. And you very much have that. Okay? And you don't get that by taking teeth out. You know? he, he has a clinical analysis of a smile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, but that, that first, when you, when you go into Dr. Insulara's office, that first consultation, you do, it, it's a learning experience. There's, you know, it's, and, and you start to really feel comfortable and get a better understanding of what's going on. And even before they get to the, we can fix this without surgery, you're kind of like, well, now I hope they can fix this, you know, because you're kind of figuring out. I, that that's true. That's true. That's true. With me, it was almost like he was psychic. Did you have this problem? Does this yes. happen? Does this happen? Does this happen? That happened with me too. Yeah. Yeah. You work backwards. Mm -hmm. You can't have one thing without having another slew of other things because it's all connected. Yeah. So your journey began towards the non-surgical solution. What what was uh, your first steps? 
Um, so I met in uh, November of 2019, and then um, we got started right away after that. I, I mean, he's um, kind of booked up sometimes, so I got the first <laughs> available appointment um, to get started. And the, the first part, and I was also really fortunate at this time that I, um, for the first time, I had some orthodontia coverage. But the first part is covered, uh, it's under medical. So um, I don't think that was covered, um, but I was happy to pay whatever it was needed um, out of pocket. So um, I'm trying to remember what the first steps were. It seems like- You had like a couple of splints first. Splints. Two, two millimeter, three millimeter, because we had to treat you for TMJ first. Um, well, I do remember he uh, hooked me up to this uh, TENS machine. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the TENS machine. And um, he s stuck a bunch of stickers on me and took right. some measurements- Electrodes. Mm -hmm. To make sure, as you described it, my muscles were happy with wherever you're gonna be. Exactly. Um, it's called EMGs. Life. Okay. Electromyography. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just on board with the whole process, and uh, I brought my mom in one time. Um, so she she wanted to see what this is all about and meet him, and she had a positive experience as well. So. Um, Our last guest brought their dad in to yep. check on you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna so, keep tabs so we, on. Yeah. Him. Mom and dad approved. <laughs> yeah. I guess we we come off well. That's good. That's good. Yeah, the tens machine is interesting, and that's that's you know now all of a sudden you're in this treatment, you're you're in this analysis and and treatment plan and things, and it's a different experience than anything else. Didn't you feel that way? Oh yeah, yeah. It's unlike anything I've done before, but um, it was the tens machine is actually pretty relaxing. I was sitting in a recliner in a dark room. I might have even taken a small nap. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Been, I fell asleep. You might have had a blanket throw on you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we have blankets it's if very you need comfortable. them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. And uh, and then um, you you went through the uh, the uh, orthotic process and yes, um, I I've had a few different orthotics. <laughs> um, the most recent one was kind of chunky to start with, and he promised me that we would be shaving off layers as time <laughs> goes on. But I was a little skeptical at first, and he's like, "Trust me," and I I did. So I was like, "I'm on board with this treatment plan." So um, it took me a couple of days to get used to talking with that the most recent orthotic. Um, but like you said, I'd get used to it, and I did. It's like yeah. we just adapt. Yep. And um, and it's also been like very timely that everyone's wearing masks right now. So <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I didn't so. have to worry. It's too true. much, but. Uh, is there, with her orthotic, is there particular strategies that you take based on the crossbite? Well, we, we already, yeah, because I already kind of figured out what we're going to be doing, but I needed to get a base, and the base is a muscle, a stable muscle base, and that's what the orthotic gives us. So when we get a stable muscle base, now we know what we can do with her upper jaw, because Karen didn't have an overbite, she had an underbite. Okay. So that's why they were talking surgery. But we didn't, we, we actually brought the maxilla forward. <clears throat> and what did you wear to bring your upper jaw forward? I wore, um, well, you have a different name for it, but it's basically headgear. Well, uh, it's it's a, a, but it's, I just call it a face mask. Face mask. But it's a, it's a pull forward. It's this beautiful appliance <laughs> um, that I would wear at night. Right. And um, so you can attach rubber bands to, um, I didn't have the full braces yet at that point. Um, but he, right. he cemented this appliance in that would just kind of hold these little hooks in place. So I could um, rubber band from my teeth basically to this, which was maybe like three inches out front of my um, upper mandible. So make sure you tell people there was no pain involved, right? Oh, yeah. No, no pain at all. Um, and I just got used to looking a little bit goofy, but I was just going to sleep with it on. Going so. to sleep. Yeah. And you can even be a side sleeper with it. I I didn't have any issue with that. Right. So. Right. Um, it just became, I adopted this kind of lengthy night routine because I really want to keep my teeth super clean. So maybe 20 minutes each evening, I've been using a water pick and floss and everything. And then you rubber band everything up and go to bed. It's, it's been kind of fun. <laughs> it worked. And yeah. it always works. Well, and, and you hit on another thing. We talked about no, no surgery. And then the other thing is the pain free. You know, it's That's it's huge. it's a process, and you, you got to follow the steps. And you said, give in, uh, uh, buy into the treatment plan, and follow it. But if you do, you know, it is no non-surgical and pain-free. 
They've never poked me with any needles. <laughs> I yeah, I mean th- we don't do that. I mean nope. uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a good. The only thing about the ex- the experience is it's all transition, and you're going from one area to the next, and there's going to be an appliance in your mouth, and you do have to you do have to be consistent with it, and that's really the key, as well as with your posture as well. So, mm-hmm. how about your neck and back, and when you first came in, type of stuff. Yeah. How'd that go? So, um, you know, I had been getting massages monthly and not just because I wanted to pamper myself. I felt like I, I really needed it because every once in a while my neck would just kind of lock up and I wouldn't be able to turn my head all the way. Oh, wow. Um, and then I also have seen chiropractors over the years. Um, but I don't have those issues at all anymore. It's crazy. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's not coincidental. Right. I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, when you when you create stability in the facial muscles and the the, the the masticatory or the biting muscles, which go into the neck, shoulders, and back, and then Karen does her homework, doing the posture therapy that she needed to do, uh, it it works really well. And the and the at home therapy component is a very important part of it. The, what were you doing? The foam roller. Um, so you, uh, he recommended swimming. I did swimming oh, a couple okay. times, but I'm really into yoga. So that's what I've been doing for it's the most just, part. It's fine. Yeah. Hey, look, you know, whatever works. You came in with pain and you don't have pain. It, 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 do it. It's the greatest thing. Yeah. Yeah. The yoga, foam roller. There's all, there's all kinds of mm-hmm. ways to go. Um, you know, I had that one lady with that so severe scoliosis and, uh, she did swimming, uh, five days a week for half an hour and she did yoga twice a week. So... And it's, and uh, you know, I, I'll never forget this because I had an accident case. The lady absolutely refused physical therapy, which I, I you know, we recommend that too. And uh, she said, I'm just going to do yoga. And I said, well, we got to see the results. And she gave me the results because yoga does work. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yep. You just have to be consistent. Muscles require that. I mean, I think we all know that. So, and, 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 and Karen is almost graduating. So you, we're going to graduate by that picture. You know that picture in the hallway. And uh, <laughs> you don't get there unless you're consistent and you're a good person. Right. So it's also nice that she's a nice person. Too. <laughs> and, you are too. And, the, and, and um, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I say pretty extreme case. You were trying to find a solution for years. Yeah. And started with Dr. Insular, if I remembered correctly, you said 2019. Mm-hmm. The Yeah, November, I think it was. It's you said. barely 2022. And. You, you're talking graduation, so that's but, that's but if, a nice process. But if you think, and I, I, can I, I'm just going to just reiterate this. This is a lady that had an underbite. Okay, so we had to stabilize muscle. So it isn't just about teeth, not even close. And we had to stabilize muscle, create the right position for her to be in, and then we had to we used the pull forward appliance, a face mask and pull forward appliance, to make that maxilla move. Meantime, we're measuring everything. So we had lots of skull measurements to make sure everything was going right. And, um, and then after that, like we do with any, with any uh, person with uh, TMJ, we're bringing teeth to the right place to support the jaw and muscles so that Karen won't have any symptoms for the rest of her life. So, and that's, pretty, that's a lot of stuff to happen in two years. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's a, yeah. I, I, I commend you for you know, your consistency, and it, and it all works so nicely. So. Yeah, I always look forward to coming in for appointments. It's, yeah, <laughs> she, well, she's an easy person to to work with, so it's great. But I mean, that when you're a person who has these symptoms and issues, and you're thinking about going somewhere, going into a, a office that you've never been in, that's kind of an intimidating thing. You know, I'm walking in the stairs and taking the elevator, and 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 your staff <laughs> helps a lot with that. I was just going to say that because it's the same staff. We might we just added I Riley's the new one who I tease a lot. But guess what? Riley has a face mask. We <laughs> work. She's she's been using that, and we've seen beautiful results on her. Um, so she knows it, and you know you know Liz of course, and Liz had TMJ treatment as well. Mary had at so did I. I mean we all kind of know what people are experiencing, and but it's just it, that's what I'm saying. The staff is. You're not going to see very. You're not going to see any differences. They they understand you. They understand what's going on. Yeah, it's nice to have a familiar face. They know me. Right. 
Karen, That's my guess know. is that Riley will be picking on Doctor and Solera like the rest of them very yes. soon. Yes. As <laughs> oh, she's already she's already done that. Yeah, yeah, she's she's picked up on that pretty good. But you know, you, you, we sling it around a little bit, you know, when patients aren't there, so it's okay. It's a fun environment. Yeah. Right. Well, I I don't like being having an office that would be uptight. That that's that's not that's terrible. I mean, that just chews you up. I I don't want to be like that. I don't want the office like that. I don't want the staff like that. We we just want to help people. So. And so surgery is all the way off the table. You're yep. almost graduated, yeah. and uh, complete satisfaction with your journey with uh, TMJ and Sleep Center. Oh yeah. And Absolutely. those braces are coming off soon. You know, I've gotten used to them. I feel like I look kind of cute in them. <laughs> I like. Uh, I, I think you do. I, I like mean, the red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Valentine's. Oh yeah, it's true. You could do that. Yeah. So it's 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 all good. It's uh it's a win win. I I love it when people are happy and uh, yeah, it's a win win. So. Karen, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And good luck as you come closing in on that graduation. Thank you. I know it's fun. <laughs> We have that standard picture. Everybody graduates from that picture. We take it. And we might put that on, and we'll put that on our webpage, if you don't mind. Cool, yeah. yeah. That'd be kind. That'd yeah. be fun. So, thank you very much. Again. Thank you for everything. No problem.